Okay, so this is lab 49, and lab 49 is to help you study for the final. And so here is the video I promised you on solving lab 49. So let's go to paper view. Um, and so here's our, our paper view. Ooh, do I have a calculator? I do, really good. Okay, so I have to factor all of these pieces because when, when you divide this, that means that you multiply by the reciprocal. When you're multiplying and dividing, the goal is not to get the denominators the same. Um, the goal is to um, factor all of the pieces so that you can reduce as many of those pieces as you can. So um, basically, uh, when I rewrite this, 5y squared minus 6y plus 1 divided by y cubed minus 1 times, and then let's see, 4y cubed plus 7y squared plus 3y, all divided by, so I've I flipped this fraction over, uh, 16y to the fourth minus, there's my 4, 9y to the second. So quite a bit of factoring here. Um, and not easy factoring either. None of it's easy factoring here. This is all, uh, all of it, I would say, is um, uh, I, why is this number one, right? But okay, so we're going we're gonna to do it. So here, uh, when I try to factor, factor this, it's a trinomial. I'm going to have this be my factor zone, factor zone. And so 5y squared minus 6y plus 1. Um, there is no common factor for all three terms. And, um, and so I make the first work, 5y times y, that's the only possibility, and 1 times 1 to make the last work. And I'm hoping I'll make 6 in the center, and I can kind of see that, well, uh, just by my knowledge of how this is going to multiply together, that yeah, I am. Now, I want the signs to be the same because this is a positive. They have to both be negative, so both negative. And when I check this, I'm only checking to make sure I'm making the center. Minus, right, 5y minus 1y makes negative 6y. So yeah, so we got this one factored in the factoring zone, and I'm going to replace it with how it got factored. 5y minus 1 times y minus 1. And when you times... Um, all of the numerator is going to go together, and so I can I can do that in I'll probably just do that in one step here. I'll show you. So I'll put a times here, and then I'll I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now y cubed minus one, uh, that's a, a um, uh, that's a cube. There is no greatest common factor for all terms, and so I'm going to be using the cube formula. Um, and so the cube formula is this: a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b, uh, a squared plus a b plus b squared. You don't have to memorize that. You can write it on your note sheet. Um, one is equal to one cubed. So this is y to the third minus one to the third. So one's kind of a special number. Had it been eight, then it would have been two to the third, right? But one to the third is one, so it's kind of special. So uh, everywhere we see a, we're going to put in y, and everywhere we see b, we're going to put in 1. So in our little formula here, everywhere we see a, we're going to put in 1, uh, y. <laughs> everywhere we see a, we're going to put in y. And everywhere we see b, we're going to put in 1, minus 1. So I see a squared, so y squared. Then I'm going to multiply them together, the 1 and the y, right? And so that's going to be y. And then I'm going to uh, 1 squared, which is 1. So I have got it factored. I know that the trinomial, when I factor the cube using the cube, doesn't factor any further. So I'm going to put a box around this in my factoring zone. I probably could have factored that one uh, without the factoring zone um, because that one isn't, once you get that formula memorized down, uh, it's not really any work to show. Okay. Um, up here in the numerator, okay, um, maybe I can fit that right here. I hope I can. Uh, 4y cubed plus 7y squared plus 3y. I'm going to factor that. It has a common factor for all three terms. It's y. So this is 4y squared plus 7y plus 3. 
Now um, I'm going to try to make the first work and make the last work. And you, it could be 2y. This I'm ignoring this y right here. And in fact, I'm going to put it over here. Uh, there it is, y, so that when you know that uh, when I start working on the trinomial, that I can just kind of ignore it. So I already put it over here, done with it, uh, and so um, it could be two y times two y, and it could be four y times y, but I know that it's one times three, and I know the signs are both positive, and I'm thinking I got to make seven, and so if I start putting these together, I get six here, and I thought, oh good because I want to make seven, right? Two y times three is six y. And so that's good. But you know, when you put those together, two y times one makes two y. So that would make eight y. So I probably don't want to try two y, two y first. So uh, the four y, four, uh, y, well, if I put the four with the three together and they multiply, I'll get 12, which that's bigger than seven. I don't want that. So I got to put the four with the one, which gives me four y. And then y times 3 is 3y. So I got 4y, I got 3y, and that somehow is going to make 7. So I'm going to try to put this together. So I got 4y, and I've got a y. And I don't want the 3 to multiply with the 4, so this 3 has got to go in here. And the signs have got to be the same, because that's a plus, And they have to both be positive, so both positive. And yeah, you gotta, you got to practice your factoring. Um, but we've been practicing our factoring almost the whole semester because it's come up every chapter. Um, and but I realize that this one, this one's kind of like a wow, a wow one. So now I'm going to factor this, and so I put the box around this in my factoring zone. I'm not going to say that it's a fun zone over there. I'm going to. I hate that line getting in my way. Um, uh, I love my boxes, but sometimes my boxes get in my own way. Um, okay, so greatest common factor is y squared. So I'm going to put that to the front. And uh, that gives me 16y squared minus 9. Then this is a difference of squares. Um, so this is a difference of squares. So what makes 16 is 4y times 4y. What makes 9 is 3 times 3. One sign's positive, one sign's negative. So I'm going to put that over here. Now I notice that I'm going to be canceling things. And I have a monomial y. And this is a monomial y squared. So I can write that y squared as y times y. And then it's just nice for canceling. So this is y times y times y, 4y plus 3 um, divided by 4. I also have 4y, 4y minus 3. I don't know why I said divided by, but it is in the denominator there. Okay, and then I don't know where I got this lovely pencil pen, but I'm going to use it. Um, and so when when you multiply a fraction by a fraction, um, I'm going to write that right up here in pencil. If you have a over b times c over d, then when you multiply them together, you just put the numerators together. And so this is a c, and this is and you put the denominators together b d. And then I want to reduce. That's what our book says to do. Some people say, hey, you should reduce before you put it together. And it really, it doesn't matter because usually what I do is I say, okay, if I put this together, then this would all be in one fraction. And, and that answers the question. People ask, can I cancel if it's top and bottom or if it's catty corner, right? You know, the catty corner or top and bottom. Well, it really is just top and bottom. That's really all you have. Um, that pen, pen doesn't really write, uh, and so I won't be using it. But there isn't something to cancel with the 5y minus 1 in the denominator. There is no 5y minus 1. I'm looking for a y minus 1, and I see a y minus 1, so they reduce. You're really dividing them, and you get 1, right? y minus 1 divided by y minus 1 equals 1. And then I'm continuing y divided by y. And then 4y plus 3 divided by 4y plus 3. And then there isn't a y plus 1 in the denominator. There's this thing that has more terms. It's a trinomial. And you might say, well, it has some of the same terms. But that doesn't help. It has to be exactly the same. It has to be the same size. And uh, the terms have to be the same. And so like here, these are the same size, but the terms aren't the same. 
And this is not the same size, even though they have some terms in common. They have to be the same term and the same size. So what that leaves us left in the numerator uh, for our answer is 5y minus 1, and also in the numerator, y plus 1. And in the denominator, um, those are both binomials, so it doesn't matter which one you write first and which one you write second. Uh, but in the denominator, I have a monomial, so it should be written first. I have y as a monomial, so it should be written first. Then the binomial should be written second, 4y minus 3 size matters. And then uh, the trinomial, uh, yeah, you're writing it in the common notation. Um, that's part of being uh, a math person. Okay, so we did a lovely job on that. And then the next one, so that was a, like a practicing all of our factoring. The only factoring we didn't practice there was factoring four terms. And um, good news, um, I know that there's one of those uh, for us to factor somewhere. I'm going to write up here, Kiwi, so that when I scan it, um, you'll know that this was the, I'm going to, I'm going to scan this very one and put it on the, on our canvas. Okay. So I'm supposed to solve this to find all three solutions. It's cubic. And so when something's cubic, the strategy, remember there's a strategy after you identify it. So I've identified it as cubic. And so the strategy is to get zero on one side and try to factor it. And that's called standard form. Uh, and you try to do that with quadratics and cubics and raised to the force <laughs> and um, anything higher than that. And we mainly focused in our class on raised to the second and raised to the third as far as when you have, have these polynomials where you're going to get them in standard form. So I noticed, oh, well, to factor this, this is x to the third minus 4 to the third because I recognize that it's a cubic. And hey, I'm going to use when I factor it. Um, so a cubic, uh, I'm going to use that formula that I wrote up here, that one right there, a cubed minus b cubed. So this time the x is a and the 4 is b. And I'm just replacing it in here. It is factor formula. <laughs> it's formula factoring, right? Recognizing it and then filling in the blanks. Um, you have also heard me sing a song. Um, and I'm okay with either one. I say finger over threes, write what you see, which would be x minus four. And if you follow using the formula, well, it's the same thing. Uh, the a is x and the b is four, so you would have x minus four. And then you notice in the formula, you square a. Well, how's my song go? My song says square. Square that, x, x squared. Then you multiply them together, right? So my song goes square, multiply, square. Well, you multiply them together four times x. And then you take four and you square it. And so the song all together is fingers over three, write what you see, um, square, multiply, square. Uh, and you square the first thing, you multiply the two things together, the bases, and you square that one, and then soap. Uh, same as what you started with, opposite of that, which would be plus and always positive. And then you, you should make things look just a little bit nicer. So x minus 4 and then x squared plus 4x plus 16 equals 0. And so, yeah, I know you could have done 4 squared is 16 in your head, but just I was just kind of following the formula there and um, and it's all good. So now I know that this will not factor further. If I thought it would factor, I would factor it. But I know that when you use the cube formula that the trinomial does not factor. It's always prime. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to solve this by using factoring, but I can solve, I can now set the pieces equal to zero, right? So this is X minus four equals zero uh, and X plus four X plus 16 equals zero. And this is a uh, linear. And so I can just add four to both sides and I found one of the answers and there's three. So X is four is an answer and I'm putting it down here on the answer line comma. And then I'm gonna use the quadratic formula to find the answers here. And so we know that A is one, B is four, uh, C is 16. So this is quadratic here and I'm gonna use the quadratic formula because it won't factor and it has a middle term. So those, that. That makes me use the quadratic formula. My quadratic formula looks like this.
you can go on the internet and find people singing um, the quadratic formula to the tune Pop Goes the Weasel, if you like. Um, but good news, you're allowed a note sheet, so you don't have to memorize it. You can put the quadratic formula on your note sheet. Having the quadratic formula on your note sheet is probably better than having an example of the quadratic formula on your note sheet because that's what I find people do is put an example and they think they say, well, that's the best way for me. And then I find at grading it that it's actually not the best way for you, um, even if you think it is the best way for you because uh, you start getting the numbers mixed up. So um, the having the concept and then writing down the formula is really best. So uh, B is four and A is one. What are you doing, Susie? I got a peeping cat peeping through the window here at me. And uh, I don't know what's going on here, but she's peeking through the curtain. Uh, she's probably like, what the heck? You know, is it COVID lockdown again? Get back to work. Um, and so here I get minus four plus or minus, and then the square root of, and then I'm gonna put that in my calculator. Uh, I've kind of gone to this way of going, even though the Casio will handle the whole thing, um, and, and kind of have done it for my TI friends. And, um, and so, because, yeah, the, the TI doesn't like so much to do it all at one time, so I've kind of got this routine. It's okay, though, it, it works out pretty good. So I get underneath there, negative 48, and then here, two times one is two. Then I want to use the calculator. Uh, here's what I want to use. I want to use the calculator to find the square root of 48. And I know I have the square root of negative 48, uh, but I'm finding the square root of positive 48 so that my people with a TI that doesn't have complex mode can do it just the same as us. So if you know how to do it in complex mode, more power to you. So the square root of 48 is four square roots of three. So that means the square root of negative 48, right? So I use the calculator. So negative 48 is what I really have. So that would mean four square root of three times I. Hey babe, what are you doing? What's going on? What's going on? You're acting really strange. Are you gonna come over here and show everybody your face? or your behind, whichever one. She jumped down just before she got underneath the camera. She was like, nope, I'm camera shy today. So this means that we have negative four, um, four square roots of three I, all divided by um, two. And then you divide the pieces. And I, I have gone to basically writing it like your book does after seeing people make the make boo-boos. So I am kind of like your book. This is your book, writes it. They say, hey, you can separate these when you have a binomial in the numerator, two terms in the numerator, binomial in the numerator, and a monomial in the denominator, you can divide the pieces. And since I see people making uh, boo-boo on that, mistake on that all the time, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. And so this gives us negative two. So X equals negative two plus or minus, and then four divided by two is two. So two square root of three I, and that I is not underneath the, the radical. Okay, so we did a lovely job on, on that. Um, if you wanted to, you could check your answer. You can put it back in your calculator in complex mode and check your answer. So let's see here if I can figure out how to do it. Mode, and then on this calculator, complex number two. And um, so uh, my answer here is negative two. I'm going to just put in the positive. So there's negative two plus two square root of three. Where's the square root? Three. And then I. Um, I don't want the I underneath there though, so I have to go out there. So there's my I. I'm going to hit equals. And so now I know that it has it in its little memory, um, that answer. And then remember what we were checking it with is X to the third. This is our X. So I'm going to say answer to the third. And then minus 64. And I'm expecting that that'll give it zero. And, and it did. And then, so I checked one of them, right, using the calculator. I could check four 
using the calculator, you could see that four to the third is 64 and 64 minus 64 is zero. So you can see that's gonna work. And I could check the other by putting in negative two minus two square root of three i, and then doing the same thing. That was, I think, easier than, than, um, than typing it in, um, but maybe it doesn't matter that much um, on this one. Okay, so we did a lovely job on to page two. We're on page problem three, and we've already worked 20 minutes, and it's like, wow. Um, but, you know, yak, 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 I talk too much. Okay, so in order to solve this, you have to have the, you have to get rid of the denominators. And so I'm looking at this type of problem, and I'm saying, oh, it's fractions. It's rational. And, um, and so I want to get rid of the, I want to get rid of the denominators. Now, I'm going to do a trick that I didn't do in class, but I'm not going to be able to help myself. Do you guys notice that I have fraction, this first fraction, minus this second fraction? And what I could do is I could add the second fraction to the other side because I have zero. And then I would have a fraction equals a fraction. <laughs> and um, that's kind of nice to do that. Um, in order to get rid of the denominator, so you also want to, you want to factor them. So it doesn't matter what order I do this in. So I think I'll add, I think I'll add this add this to the other side. So when the desk clears, I'm gonna get x plus two over, now I'm gonna go ahead and allow myself to factor that. Uh, should I do that? Uh, no, I won't. Do Too many steps at one time. Equals, and then I'm gonna add this to the other side. And now I'm gonna factor the, de uh, the denominators. So right here I have x plus two over uh, x, times x minus one equals six over x plus one, x minus one. And I want to multiply by the co common denominator. And the only reason that I'm gonna do that is because um, you shouldn't cross multiply, even though it's a good method of using, you shouldn't cross multiply if you have a, uh, if you have a common term. Now, if you want to get rid of that common term, you can get rid of that common term and then cross multiply if you, if you liked. But I think, if, well, if I'm going to, if I have a common term, I'm not going to cross multiply. So they have X minus one in common. So the lowest common denominator, and this is what I'm going to be multiplying by, is equal to X and X minus one. So X, that was an X, but it, it, it didn't start looking like an X. And then X minus one. And this has an x plus one and an x minus one. I already have an x minus one, so I need an x plus one. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do that to, to both of these fractions. And so I have x plus two over x times x minus one. And then times, I'm gonna write this in, maybe this blue will work, we'll see if it does. And so this is x times x minus one times x plus one. And I'm gonna write it over one. So that's what I'm multiplying by on the left, and then equals, and then on the right, we're gonna balance. That's the problem with the world, is the left and the right don't balance, but we're gonna make them balance here. So we're gonna do the same on the right over here. And then I'm here to cancel. That's the reason that I'm multiplying by this. So on this side over here, I'm saying to myself, what is this when the dust clears? So the X's cancel with the X, X in the top and an X in the bottom, and X minus one and the X minus one, and yeah, yeah, that was the plan. And so what that gives me is X plus two times X plus one. Now you might ask, how did you know to put parentheses around this? And I don't know if you guys remember, but the numerator of a fraction is a grouping symbol. So this is in the numerator of a fraction. So it has parentheses around it, whether you write them or not. And so when I wrote it from the numerator of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator of a fraction are a grouping symbol, then I needed a grouping symbol. So it's not just the two that's gonna be distributed through this, it's gonna to have to be FOIL over here. So when I multiply over here, so that's what I'm gonna do over here now too, the X plus one reduces with the X plus one and the x minus one reduces with the x minus one, and I get six x. And, um, and so uh, I don't know if it makes it better or made it worse than how I did it in class, because 
how I did it here was if I was going to be able to cross multiply. Now I'm feeling guilty for having moved that onto the other side because here in a minute I'm going to move it back and then you're going to say, why did you move it over there? And the answer is, I don't know, because I didn't want to have to write this three times. And the zero, you know, that was why. So now I'm foiling this because I, I, I've made it where it looks nicer. This is the problem I am now to solve. And it looks nicer, but the problem with it is, is I'm not sure, is it quadratic or is it linear? Now you might be thinking when you foil, it's going to be quadratic and you're right. And quadratic, you need zero on one side and I have six X. So, um, so if it's quadratic, I need to foil it together and get like terms. So here X squared plus one X plus two X plus two equals six X. And it is quadratic, so I'm going to take away 6x both sides. So when the dust clears, we get x squared um, minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And then we're going to factor it or use the quadratic formula. We're almost out of room, so we'll factor. x minus 2, uh, x minus 1 makes 3, uh, 0. So we get x is 2, and we get x is 1. And these are... And I didn't write that it's a must check, but anytime that you clear the fractions, it's a must check. So I should have said from the beginning, it's a must check and uh, remind, reminded myself of that. But it's always a good idea to check uh, no matter what. And so when I do go and I check this in the original, so here I am, check, 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 <laughs> check. I didn't write two there, did I? Um, and so I don't know why I... Uh, I don't know why, because I was thinking about my soda pop. Um, I don't have tea. I actually have Dr. Pepper. I'm feeling really happy about it. And so, um, so if I plug in X is two, this would be two plus two. I'm back looking at the original and then X, uh, two squared minus two, uh, minus six, <laughs> over uh, two uh, squared minus one equals zero. Back in the original, checking two. X is two, I checked two because it was written first. So using my calculator, I need a fraction. I need it turned on, I need a fraction. Where's the light? The light is uh, not perfect, but not, not bad either. Okay, two plus two. And in the denominator, I need two squared, or is it cubed? It's squared. Two squared, my handwriting, two squared minus two. And, uh, and then minus, and then in the numerator, six. And in the denominator, um, two squared. Squared minus one. And I'm going to put the parentheses where our X's were here, our X was two. And so that I have parentheses around every X that we had was X plus two. So that when I edit, I'll be able to look for those parentheses knowing that's what I substituted in was, was two. So I didn't, when I put them in, I always say that you put parentheses when you substitute. And then I was a little bit lazy and only put them where they were next necessary. Uh, so when I hit equals, I get zero. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to substitute in one. So that worked. Yay. I was supposed to get zero. So I'm going to substitute in one. So everywhere I have a two in parentheses, I'm substituting one in because that was the other answer. And it might work or it might not work. So I just learned that X is two works. So I'm putting it on the answer line. X is two. And now I'm checking X is one and I get math error. And the reason I get math error when I check, uh, when I check X is one is because it makes the denominator of the original equal to one, uh, equal to zero. And the denominator is not allowed to be zero. So that's called extraneous. You just cross it out. It's not a solution. So hot diggity dog, we move on to number four and we're like, are you kidding? There's, there's nine of these, but um, eight o'clockers, good for you. You had every single one of them up on the board. And, um, and, so, uh, and so that was um, totally awesome. And a lot of 935ers had them, had, did them on their own, uh, was working on them. 935ers are not liking to go to the board, but that's okay. It, it's all good. So I'm trying to find all three solutions. And so I'm gonna factor out an X 
because it has a common factor of x. So when it's cubic, uh, you expect three solutions. And how you find those three solutions is you get 0 on one side and factor it. So here, x times x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. And, um, and so, uh, and if this will factor, then you factor it and, uh, and, and then you uh, solve it. Um, and so trying to factor that, you know, to make the first work would be x times x. To make the last work would be 2 times 1. And, um, and 2 and 1 do add to be 3, but they need to subtract. <laughs> they need to subtract to be 3, unfortunately. And true confessions, um, I meant for this one to factor when I typed it up. Um, I'm, I think I just made a little tiny boo-boo. I think I meant to have a plus there. So we it, since it doesn't factor, we have to use the quadratic formula. And, um, and so we will do that. So true, true confessions, x is 0, that's one solution, x squared minus 3x that this problem didn't turn out the way I had intended it to, but it turns out a way that we can solve, even though um, I was thinking that I was making a problem that would factor, because it nearly factors, right? Uh, and that was just probably got too late and I got too tired. And uh, so um, anyway, here I am using the quadratic formula, which we've already practiced one time today. I'm just gonna fill this in with the blanks and then fill in the blanks. Right now, I'm singing Pop Goes the Weasel in my head to the quadratic formula. I'm not really, but um, if it makes us happy to think that's what we're singing, I'm really thinking to myself, um, I don't know, I've gotten to a point where I know the quadratic formula pretty darn well. Uh, I might m mess it up, so I shouldn't brag too much. So here, a negative times, I bet you know it pretty well too. A negative times a negative is a positive. Have more confidence if you're saying, no, I don't know it, right? So more confidence is what you need. And uh, underneath here is nine. And then this is gonna be plus eight, which is 17. And square root of 17 doesn't reduce, but if you wanted to make sure that it didn't, you could check it out on your calculator, the square root of 17. And yeah, it doesn't reduce. And so this is our answer. That's all we can do. So we get three answers, x equals three plus or minus the square root of 17, all divided by two. And uh, so those are our three answers. It's gonna get a little bit better. Uh, it's always a good idea to check your answer. And if you wanted to, you definitely can check, can check your answer. Um, it's easy to check zero. Zero cubed is zero, minus three times zero squared. Well, that's zero, so minus zero. And then that's zero, and so you got a string of add and subtracts of zero, so that equals zero. But this one right here, you might be thinking, ah, is that gonna work? And so I'm gonna try the plus on it and, um, and just show you that you can check it. Three plus the square root of 17 divided by two. Okay, so, um, I was making sure my dad um, is uh, making sure it wasn't my dad. Okay, so uh, and so I'm gonna I hit that answer, so it's snapped down here. So I'm gonna use the answer for it. So x to the third, the answer to the third, minus three times the answer squared, uh, minus two times the answer, ought to be zero. So this one's a little harder for the calculator to calculate, so it took it a while, but it did give us back zero. And so, yeah, it's a good idea to check your answer on everything. It wasn't a must check, uh, but here's a logarithm. And when you solve a logarithm problem, yeah, there are must checks. So you have to check your answer, uh, every logarithm problem. The good news is this logarithm problem is in perfect form. Um, you know, we have our log, we have our base, we have our input, we have equals our exponent. And so when it's in perfect form like that, uh, you're rearranging those three things. It's called exponential form. Um, and it's our base uh, raised to the exponent equals the input. And you could put the input on the other side if you wanted, it doesn't matter. So um, however you wanna go is all good. So in our case, our, our input is x, our base is five, our exponent is negative two, 
And so our base is 5. Our exponent is negative 2 equals x. And then you could put that in your calculator, 5 to the negative 2. We've all of a sudden solved for x. You can use also your negative um, exponent rules and do that in your head. Oh, it's going to make it in the denominator. And then it'll be 1 over 5 to the second, right? And five, 1 over 5 to the second is 1 over 25. Calculator does it for you. Your head would have done it for you. Um, it's all good. And so we get uh, equals x. So x equals 1 over 25. And I've got it down here on my answer line before I checked. But it is a must check, so I probably should have been checking here. But log base 5, so here in my calculator, log base 5. Then there, I want a fraction, 1 over 25. I'm going to hit equals, and I get negative 2. Hot diggity dog. Right? So it was a must check, and I did check. I checked with my calculator. We're on number 5. That one didn't take as long. So even though it was logarithms, and you might be saying logarithms are harder, right, than quadratics and cubics and uh, linear ones. Well, think again. I mean, how much work? How much work were those here versus this here? Uh, that's why people did better on the test, too, I'm sure, uh, is not as much, when there's not as much work, there's not as much room to make error. Okay, this is not in exponential form, but I notice that my variable is an exponent. And so that's what tells me to put it in exponential form. Now, what exponential form looks like, so exponential form, how I knew that it was an exponential problem is the variable is in, it, is in the exponent. That's why I think that it's an, um, an exponential problem. Now, exponential form is a base, the exponent, and then on the other side, we'll call it the input, but a number on the other side or a variable on the other side, whatever the heck it is, but stuff on the other side. So you have these three pieces. And, um, and so right now I have uh, the base, which is 2, the exponent, which is x, so this and this. And then on the other side, I have a number, which is cool. I'm allowed to have that. But what is not cool is the minus 1. And so what you do is you add 1 so that you can have just those three pieces. So hot diggity dog, now I have just those three pieces and the idea then, if you can't look at it and see what the answer is. So I look at it and I say, well, two to the one's not the answer because that would be two and two to the second's not the answer because that'd be four and two to the third's not the answer because that would be eight, right? So I can't just look at it and see the answer. So that means I need to turn it into a logarithm and so from um, this form, exponential form, log form looks like this. The exponent equals the log of the base and the input. And um, it doesn't matter if you put the exponent on this side or that side, doesn't matter. And so, um, and so the exponent is x. And then I need log and the base is two. And then the input is the input's the thing on the other side, right? The input's the thing on the other side, which is 7. And so log base 2 of 7 is the exact answer. It's not a nice number. If you put it in your calculator right here, log base 2, I'm going to have to take off my sweatshirt of 7. I'm getting too excited here. Um, and so, oh, you got to take off your glasses or you'll knock your glasses on the floor. I tell you, this weather, I've had this sweatshirt on and off. 15 times today. I wanted to wear it because it has orange in it <laughs> and it matches my orange skirt that I wanted to wear for some reason. And so my, my, I'm going to have to take my shoesies off too here, I think. So this is the exact answer. X equals log base 2 of 7. That's my exact answer. My 2 is right there on the line. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't want my 2 on the line. Log base 2 Remember, it, it's a little bit smaller, the 2 is, and kind of low on the G. Uh, you can put parentheses around the 7 if you like. And then over here, three decimal places. So 2.80735. So three decimal, 1, 2, 3. The next number is a 3, so that remains a 7. So 2.807, that's the approximate answer for X. So we did a lovely job on that. Um, uh, Exponential functions, not a must check, 
uh, but it's not a bad idea to check. I actually have the answer, the exact answer as the an in the answer, right? Even though I hit equals here, it's taken more places here. So I actually have the exact answer and I can just use the, the answer feature of the calculator, uh, which is down here at the bottom. It says answer right there. And so I can go to raise to the answer and then I want to go downstairs and put minus one and I'm expecting that that would equal six and it unless I've made a mistake it should equal six now I put in the exact value and that's why I got back the the exact value if you put in the approximate value two raised to the 2.807 and then minus one then you'll get an answer that's not quite six but really really close to six because you didn't do the exact answer, you did an approximate answer, so it's approximately equal to six there. You know, us mathematicians, we always like the approximate We like to know what the approximate answer is, but we like to know the exact answer as well. So now I'm on to number seven and I'm solving still, and I notice, oh, it's one of those systems of equations, two equations, two unknowns. And I notice that it's stacked up like a Wendy's double stack, right? So I'm going to eliminate, this is equation one and equation two. And my goal here is going to, because I know this, because I've done this problem in class, um, I'm going to eliminate X. And I'm going to write my, wor my work here. I'm going to eliminate X by, um, to equation one, I'm going to do nothing. I hope that you're making a plan of what I'm going to do to equation two. Equation two, I know we're usually too lazy to write this out quite like this, but I'm going to multiply by, I hope you're thinking, what would I multiply equation two by so that I eliminate x when I stack them up? Yeah, negative eight. So this is eight x minus three y equals two. And then when I multiply by negative eight, negative eight x, and then when I multiply six times negative eight, negative 48, that might be even one that I get a calculator and make sure on. And then negative eight times a pos negative 10 is a positive 80, because that was my nemesis when I was uh, in school. And um, I don't know how many times I got that wrong. And so then here I'm getting negative 48, 49, 50, 51. Negative 51, y equals 82. And uh, I'm gonna divide by negative 51 and I'm gonna reduce it if it reduces. So this is 82 over negative 51. And I'm gonna put this in my calculator. So 82 over 51, I forgot to put the negative in. I'm gonna put it as a fraction. I was doing it as a divide and then I thought, oh, here I haven't uh, put the negative in. And um, the calculator says it doesn't reduce, okay. So I'm going to eliminate, so that's ugly, so I'm going to eliminate y. And to eliminate y, for equation 1, I'm going to multiply by 2. So I get 16x minus 6y equals 4. And equation 2, I'm going to do nothing. And... And that always reminds me when I write do nothing. It reminds me of a Louis Armstrong song, uh, do nothing until you hear from me. You guys can look it up. And, um, and so uh, pretty good. And so here I get 17 X and uh, over here I get negative six. And so I'm gonna divide by 17. So I get X equals negative six over 17. So your answer should be an ordered pair when you solve a system of equations and you write x first. So that's negative 6 over 17, comma, negative 51 over 82. And yes, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, like, oh my gosh, is that, could that be the right answer? And yeah, I plan on checking it to make sure. So in the original equation right here, 8 and then parentheses, and then what we know about x, which is a fraction, negative six over 17. And then end it, minus three, and then what we said about y, which was a fraction, negative 51 over 82. If that doesn't give me two, uh, then, well, I actually probably wouldn't be that surprised because it's such an ugly answer, uh, and I would, 
then try to go back and see where I made my mistake. Um, it, it's not a must check. It's a, it's a good idea to check. Um, and it doesn't give me two. And so that means that I have a um, mistake somewhere. Uh, oh, I see it. Do you see my mistake? Uh, I accidentally flipped that upside down when I was putting it here. Uh, but then when I plugged it in here, I did it correctly. So um, I did it wrong. I mean, I did it. Well, I don't know. I accidentally flipped this upside down. And so some of you might be saying, why did you flip that upside down? And I don't know why I did that. You know, anytime that you've made a mistake and someone asks you, why did you make that mistake? Um, I'm, I'm like, well, I'm just as shocked as you. So really in the denominator, I should have 51. And in the numerator, I should have 82. Okay, now it should give me two. And if it doesn't give me two, um, then I'm going to be unhappy. So it did. And you need to check in both. So the other one was just X. So I'm going to just go and edit this. And I am expect to get 10. So I'm going to edit the 8 to be, uh, you could put a 1 there if you wanted. And then I'm going to edit the minus 3 right here to be plus 6. And I do get negative 10. So hot diggity dog, I checked it. So, so far I've checked all of my, all of my answers and it's a good idea to check them definitely. Okay. And so here we are now just a few more to do on lab 49. Okay. So, uh, it says, here's some word problems for you. Find the approximate distance across the pond at Hart Park. And then here's the picture. Um, A is 75 feet. B is 102 feet. What is the approximate distance um, across the pond round to the nearest foot? And, um, and so we, we, know how to, we know how to do that. We've done this problem before. Somehow some writing got on the back here. Not sure how, but I'll get rid of it. Um, Pythagorean theorem, right? Uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A is 75 squared and b is 102 squared c squared so with our calculator 75 squared plus 102 squared is 16029 equals c squared i want to know what c is right so i'm going to take the square root of both sides we've we kind of have talked about that it's this property if x squared equals a constant, right, um, a number. Well, that's what I have. c squared equals a number, right? You don't have to rewrite it, but I just want to make sure that yes, right, calling it c squared, my number is this. Well, the big then is that x equals plus or minus, it's called the, it's called the square root property, uh, equals, um, equals plus or minus k, the square root of k. Uh, the reason that I don't have to worry about the plus or minus here is because this is a distance across a pond, which is positive. So the square root of 16029, uh, my calculator says, is 126.6. They said to round to the nearest foot. So the nearest foot would be 126. Uh, would be my line straight up and down on my decimal point. Because this is six, you bump it up to the next number, which is 127 feet. So, yay, we did a lovely job on that. One more problem, and we can put this uh, video, we can put these nine problems in the books. And, uh, and so it says, the walk to the top of Tehachapi Peak is steep. The trail rises 2,000 feet over a horizontal distance of 13,200 feet. Find the grade of the trail round to the nearest tenth of a percent. Note that the grade is a slope written as a percent. So what the grade is, is equal to the slope written as a percent. How you write anything as a percent is you multiply by 100 percent. That's how you turn anything into a percent. Um, and so the slope written as a percent means multiplied by a hundred percent. 
Now the slope is the rise over the run. So times 100%. And uh, the rise, it says it rose 2,000 feet. And then the run or the horizontal distance, so the run and the horizontal distance are two words that mean the same thing, is 13,200 feet times 100%. And the feet drop out. Feet divided by feet is gone. And so it just leaves our answer as a percentage. So 2,000 divided by 13,200 times 100%. And so um, equals there. And so I get 500 over 33. But this would be percent. And they said for me to round to the 10th. And my calculator is giving it to me as a fraction. So I need it as a decimal, so I have to tell my calculator S to D, that's standard to decimal, because the calculator doesn't know that I wanted it as a decimal. It assumes that you want everything in exact form, and as a fraction is exact form. And so, uh, so it tries its hardest to, um, you know, it makes an assumption here. So I got 15, 15, 15, right, is what it's doing, percent. And we want tenth, so uh, the, um, one place beyond the decimal. The next number is a five. So this is 15.2%. And um, okay, that's that one. Okay, how do I turn it off? I might have to call Kevin. Help, help, help. Okay, I got it. Uh, okay, lab 49.